On the Megyn Kelly show, Rich Lowry did an appearance. Rich Lowry from National Review. You might agree with him. You might disagree with him. It's all fine. I think Rich Lowry is more than capable of accepting that as the editor of the National Review. One would think it weird that he couldn't handle some criticism. But in a conversation with Megyn Kelly about immigration, he's utilizing the word migrant. He's using the word immigrant. And what comes out is a slip of the tongue that doesn't sound great. I think that's the only way it could properly be described. And to some, it sounded like Rich Lowry used the N-word. Tony Katz, did I say hello, Tony Katz, today? I forget uh, sometimes. I have often stated and remarked on this show that being a radio host, you are not only one word away from being fired, you are one mispronunciation away from losing your gig and losing your career, your livelihood, everything, never mind your reputation. What is being claimed by some as purposeful has now led to groups like Indiana State University, I, of course, uh, reside in Indiana, canceling his appearance there. Rich Lowry joins me right now. He's the editor of the National Review. His book, The Case for Nationalism, is available at Amazon.com or wherever fine books are sold. The appearance on Megyn Kelly... The conversation you were having in your words, let's start there as a matter uh, of gaining clarity. What happened? Yeah, so I was saying, thanks thanks for having me, first of all. I was saying Haitian migrants. I mispronounced the I. I stopped halfway through, so it ended up being kind of the M word. That's that's M as in Mary, (laughs) Not, not the close neighbor N. I think anyone looking closely and <clears throat> considering the context, I immediately unembarrassedly said migrants when I corrected myself. Would have known I didn't say that word. I don't have racist Tourette syndrome, which is kind of the accusation here. I, I just randomly spout, spout the word uh, in, in public at various times. Uh, somehow this has never been noticed before, despite 30 years of speaking in public. just happened to occur when I was mispronouncing the word migrants. So Media Matters and others jumped on this entirely in bad faith. I don't think any of them really thought I said it, but it was convenient for them to allege I said it. A lot of people on the center left said, no, you know, he didn't say it. He had some progressives initially taking the bait and deleting their posts or revising them and everyone on the right defended me. So it seemed as though it was kind of a, a tempest in the teapot that he experienced on Twitter. Not pleasant. You know, I wanted, don't want to go through it, but it's not very consequential. But then it turned out it had real world, world, real world consequences. This conservative think tank out in Wisconsin canceled me called the Badger Institute. And Indiana, Indiana State canceled me citing security concerns as though if I showed up there two weeks from now to discuss the election, you know, they need to mobilize a bomb squad or something. It's just totally absurd and obviously pretextual. Now, some of we'll get to the cancellations in a second. Some of the things that were put out there, this was from the rap. Rich Lowry says he didn't say the racial slur you heard him say on Megyn Kelly. Uh, the, the desire to want it, as opposed to taking a look at the source and questioning the validity of it. That seems emblematic of today's political posture, no? Yeah, so there's some cancellations. I, I'm not in favor of, of cancellations, but people go out and deliberately say something that's controversial, right? It's America. That, that's fine. It's, we, we have free speech. But this is something I didn't say, and they, they just didn't care. And a lot of the headlines were sort of like that. They'd say, I appeared to say it. Well, what, what's appeared mean? I either said it or I didn't. Or, or they'd say with kind of a, uh, uh, a sense that I'm culpable of something that I denied it. You know, like denying it is bad when I didn't, didn't say it. Or they would just suggest because I'm being accused of it, I, I must have said it. All of that is innuendo. It's McCarthyite. Most people could could see it, but unfortunately, a couple institutions where they're either too cowardly or careless to to uh, look into it. 
talking to Rich Lowry, the editor of National Review. Uh, you can find him there on uh, on the Twitters, on the X at Rich Lowry, L-O-W-R-Y. His book, The Case for Nationalism, How It Made Us Powerful, United, and Free, is available at Amazon.com. Pre-order happening right now. So Indiana State University, it's it's a small school. Even for, for Indiana, it's a small school. We are the IU people. We're the Purdue people. Boiler up. Notre Dame. Ball State. Chirp, chirp. That's what what Indiana is. A bunch of smaller uh, schools, great uh, universities. Indiana State, very much on on the on the stepchild, if you will, rung uh, of the ladder, but still a university, still trying to do uh, good work. You were scheduled to be there. Who had brought you in, and what was your speech supposed to be about? It was through my speakers bureau, so I wasn't dealing with them directly. And I believe that it, uh, this is the one that the conversation with Bakari Sellers, the progressive who, who's on CNN, about the, the election. And they, they didn't deal with me directly. They didn't give me an explanation directly. They just put out a, a statement about security. Yeah, the, the the statement that they make is that it is important to stress that this cancellation is not intended to limit our neutrality on different political viewpoints. Indiana State University remains firmly committed to fostering intellectual diversity, they write, and encouraging the respectful exchange of ideas from multiple perspectives. But they are not interested in the perspective of, I clearly didn't say what they claim I said, if only because... I have a whole history of not saying things like this. Why would one slip allow you to so impugn my characters? Is that how you feel uh, Indiana State has treated you? Uh, is, is this yeah, a, a no, character assassination? Of course. And you know, they can say they're, they're neutral, but they're taking the word of this online fringe, which isn't neutral. I'm sure they'll find some, someone right of center to, to show up, but is that, is that just what they've done? Is that American? Is that fair-minded? No. And what they should have done, what an adult institution would have done, is say, we're aware of this controversy. Mr. Lowry denies it, and we welcome and invite all students to have a question about this or anyone in the community. Show up. Ask the question. Be respectful about it. A- ask the question. We're sure Mr. Lowry will, will address it, which I, I'd be happy to do. I, I don't I don't feel defensive about this. I did nothing wrong. And, you know, if it comes to that, have a sheriff's deputy standing in the side of the room, right? But uh, they, they didn't do that. They, they've done what so many of these institutions have done, which is use security as an excuse. They, they just didn't want to deal with any hint of controversy. So this is their way to dispense with, with me at, at this event, and it's shameful. So now as you take a look at uh, the future, never mind just the election, these things have the ability to haunt post-election. And we've all had our time in the barrel, no matter yep. what level we put ourselves in the public sphere. I once got accused of making fun of Joe Biden's stutter, and it was 36 hours of being called beaver teeth and fat. Like mm-hmm. that was that was and then they moved on to the next yep. horrible that's, thing that actually really never happened yep. or maybe yep. did happen. Uh, that's the way mobs uh, certainly certainly work. Is there a leak? legal component to anything you do next or do you just say i'm moving on with my day i i needed someone from the the group fire which is which has been very important fighting for free speech on campus has reached out to me last night i haven't i haven't gotten back and and talked to them you know do do i no disrespect to indiana state i'm really happy to go go anywhere but it is is it a huge difference in my life whether I'm going to Indiana State or not? No, you know that not. I'll, I'll stay home and watch the the Yankees. Uh, ho- hopefully, still in the playoffs. But uh, it's a principle of the thing. You know, it, uh, you you are smearing me. This is this is giving credence to a smear and an act of character assassination and a lie. And you're supposed to be an institution devoted to the truth and reasoned debate. So that's that's what's deeply wrong, and that's what upsets upsets me about it. And by the way, you know, you, you got a megaphone. I got a megaphone. We're used to this. This is what we do for a living. We can defend ourselves. But there are other people who aren't journalists who, you know, God forbid you have a slip during a Zoom call when you're working for a bank, you know, with a bunch of people on it and, it, and someone records it and, and says you've said something that you, you don't, uh, it, you didn't. And it's really much harder to, to defend yourself and you, your livelihood may be destroyed. So that's what's, what's most disturbing about this phenomenon.
Uh, the piece on National Review, next time cancel me for something I actually said. You can read that National Review on nationalreview.com. Talking to Rich Lowry, editor-in-chief of National Review. But this dovetails into a piece that you wrote just two days before about Cornell and the radical norm at elite colleges, where Russell Rickford, who's a history professor, who went about cheering the attack by Hamas on Israel on October 7th, literally cheered it and then went into some level of self-decided exile and is now exited from it, was welcomed back to Cornell University. A university is willing to accept a guy who says that that murdering 1,200 people, that is okay. But you, a slip that wasn't actually a name-calling, is not. This This is, again, yeah. our, our university uh, uh, presenting itself. How, do, how does one fix this? Yeah, it, it's going to be a generational effort to try to change the culture of, of, of universities. What happened, basically, is the radicals who were protesting at so many uh, colleges in the 1960s took over those institutions. They, they became academics themselves. They trained a whole new generation of academics to think the way they did. And na- now they're even more radical than they were in 1960. And those people are the, the, the deans and the assistant deans and the professor and professors. And I didn't call on this guy to be, to be fired. I think there are free speech I- implications at play. But my, my deeper point in that column is it doesn't matter whether he in particular goes or stays because the guy who replaces him maybe will be a little more prudent you know not not give speeches saying how exhilarated he is by a pogrom but he'll he'll have the same attitudes and and, and think the same way and that's that's the issue uh, and w- with our with our current universities and it's a huge i don't need to tell you a huge problem rich lowry national review Dot com. His new book, The Case for Nationalism, uh, how it has made us powerful, united and free, available for pre-order at Amazon.com. Uh, as I said, because I reached out uh, through Noah Rothman, who we have on the show on a regular basis. You want to come to Indianapolis? Uh, you want to come to anywhere? Uh, we're happy to help make that happen. But if you want to come to Indiana, because this happened in Indiana, uh, I, I got the space. I will make this happen. You just tell me when. I really appreciate it. And, and a lot of people like you have, you know, we haven't met before. We've just met on air. But I appreciate it so much. And uh, th- this is a great country with a lot of fair-minded people. I don't know. I've gotten multiple speaking invitations just the last 12 hours since I posted my piece. And it, it means the world to me. And I really appreciate you having me on and, and hearing me out. Well, if you need to say no to any of them, send them my way. I only charge half of what you do. Rich Lowry, I appreciate you taking the time. More to get to. I'm Tony Katz.